Hello, my name's Ro, and I've suffered with anorexia since my early teens. Thankfully, I'm now in recovery, but still find myself controlled by fears of certain foods. Whilst diet culture and the media didn't cause my eating disorder, I was heavily influenced by its opinions on the foods that I once loved and enjoyed. Many of the fear foods that I went on to develop and thus cut out of my diet definitely stemmed from particular food groups and nutrients being publicly labelled as unhealthy or bad. I'm gradually teaching myself to break away from labelling food and reach a state of neutrality where I accept that no food is going to harm me. So today I decided to push myself and face the foods that diet culture claims we should avoid. Food is fuel and no food will harm you more than your eating disorder will. Good morning, um, it's breakfast time. To start the day off, which is going to be probably one of the most challenging days in my recovery so far, I've got something that diet culture really demonises. When I was looking up foods not to eat or what diet culture tells you you shouldn't eat, sugary cereal obviously came up. I've got myself a bowl of white chocolate and raspberry shreddies because I absolutely slated them in my last video. And that, since then I've eaten some dry out of the box and they were really nice, so I'm going to try again. The other thing I've got is something that I haven't had in a very long time, and that's orange juice. Again, diet culture says that this has too much sugar in it and that that's unhealthy. And I'm also challenging a rule. Seeing as this is a new thing for me having orange juice and I haven't had it in a long time, I'm just going to free pour it into a glass because putting that barrier in now and, you know, having a new thing but measuring it will mean that that's going to be just another thing that I'm going to have to then learn to not measure. And orange juice has been something I feared for a long time too because of the way diet culture talks about it. Here's to showing diet culture that it can go away. I don't know why I've been scared of orange juice for so long. When you actually think about it, it's literally fruit. It's really nice. I did that. Sugar is a macronutrient that I have really restricted for a long time and something that I've really feared. So overcoming these fears is really important to me. But I also think that sugar just shouldn't be demonized because it makes things taste nice. It's not the devil. That's all the diet culture kind of stuff that I'm doing for breakfast. I'm gonna get part two of my breakfast, which is toast and I'm gonna have some honey on it. So I'll eat that and then I will see you at snack. I'm assembling something that I'm kind of excited about actually because all of it is stuff that I don't fear anymore but it's all stuff that I have actually found articles on the internet saying you should avoid or that you just shouldn't have. So for snack I'm making a caramel oat milk latte. There's a whole section about high calorie coffee drinks and then I'm going to make myself a fruit salad because I found a whole web page called fruits you should eat and fruits you shouldn't eat. People are honestly trying to tell you that certain fruits are not healthy. Luckily, I've completely overcome any fear of any fruit. But I know that because of articles like these, lots of people start to think that certain fruits are worse than others. So I'm making a fruit salad of grapes, mango and banana. Apparently, you may want to think twice before eating a ripe banana for breakfast because of the carbohydrate and also apparently the sugar both of which the body needs. And then mangoes have a larger percent of sugar. It's naturally occurring sugar. It comes from the earth. I really like mango, I haven't had it in ages. Apparently the negative side effects of grapes are weight gain and a carb overload from grapes. Whilst I really don't think diet culture is the root cause of eating disorders, it completely normalises disordered eating. It makes restricting yourself and avoiding foods normal and an okay thing to do. Like just let people enjoy food for food. That was very nice. I'm gonna finish my coffee and I'll see you at lunch. I'm currently cooking my lunch. Cooking it? assembling it and I'm having my absolute favorite thing which does still scare me but I know I loved it as a child so I, I try to have it quite often because it 
it's like my old happy food. I'm having Richmond meat-free sausages on toasted white bread with ketchup and full fat spread because there's a lot on the internet about processed meats being bad for you. White bread, completely like the devil in diet culture and something I really still fear. And full fat spread, I see so many adverts for flora light and you know, light spreads and light butters, like kind of marketing them as like the healthy thing. When in reality, because they're low fat, there's actually a lot more chemicals in them. It's actually kind of better for your body to be having the fats that it needs. It's white bread, darling. I know, it's just white bread and this is my favorite lunch. Everybody has so many opinions on what's healthy and unhealthy. If white bread was so ridiculously unhealthy, they wouldn't sell it in the shop. It would have like a health warning on it when you bought it. Yeah. And it doesn't because it's just a food. This is the best lunch, easily. This is just so nice and I, haven't, I didn't let myself have this kind of thing for so long. It's like, why? Because like it's unhealthy like no it's not what's unhealthy is being obsessed with food having to be healthy like mentally you're not going to be happy if you're literally just obsessed with everything having to fit the standard of healthy food that was so nice on to part two of lunch which is um i'm gonna now this is something i have every every lunch time pretty much. But when I was um, doing my doing my research, fruit yogurt came up a lot. What's all that about? Apparently there's too much sugar in it. Why are you focusing on the sugar when you could focus on the calcium and the healthy fats? Everything that has something that diet culture says is bad also has something that will benefit you in some way. Literally every food you could say that about. It's just it picks and chooses, which is the new food to slate. That was a nice lunch. I'm freaking out. Apparently, some things you should never eat do include baked goods and cookies. I haven't had a store-bought cookie in years and years and years, and they terrify me. And do you know what I'm about to have? I'm never gonna have a store-bought cookie. I'm having a store-bought cookie. And do you know what? I'm really freaking out, like I'm really panicking. Like, I'm, like I feel shaky, but I'm also really excited. It's and that's so nice, like, to, to feel a bit of excitement. <laughs> oh, even bees getting excited. <laughs> Look at that, that is like the size of my face. That is huge, that's massive. It's almost the size of a plate. It's really big, isn't it? I'm all in. Anorex is not having any more of my life. In recovery, you need a lot of food and you need a lot of foods that scare you, but you also need foods that society deems as unhealthy. In recovery, your body is crying out for everything it's been denied, so. My head's literally just like going crazy. What's it saying? And that's so much and so much fat and sugar. And So how are you going to argue that? Yeah, and I need fat and sugar and I need a lot of food. And I'm actually really, really hungry right now. And this is to show everyone that you don't have to listen to diet culture and you don't have to let it rule your life. I'm not gonna let fears control me anymore. I'm genuinely a bit in shock. <laughs> you did it. I just ate that massive cookie. That was really nice. Good. My head is just going crazy. It's the whole idea of like healthy and unhealthy. If there was something wrong with people having them, they wouldn't sell them, would they? It's true. It's just a normal snack to eat. Damn, I just ate a cookie, like, wow. Oh. Did he? Uh, I'm gonna take my dog on a walk and hopefully upload a YouTube video, but yeah. So, I'm just making myself a necklace as a little distraction because I feel very, very guilty after eating that big cookie. And my head is just going round and round and round about how it's so unhealthy and it's bad and everything that I know rationally just isn't true. 
but I think because I have been so wrapped up in not letting myself have you know unhealthy foods for so long that my view of what is healthy and what's unhealthy is actually really warped as a lot of societies is because what's unhealthy is lack of fats lack of sugar lack of nutrients in your diet it's not unhealthy to have a treat but me having a treat has left me feeling ridiculously guilty and like i don't want to challenge myself at dinner and pudding and snack which i'm going to do but i think people underestimate the feelings that you get after you eat sort of you can do it but then afterwards it just gets even harder but that's why i know giving up's not an option because i'll forever be in this cycle whereas if i just do all the hard work now and get rid of anorexia for good then i won't have this guilt and it will be i'll be eating and drinking what i want when i want like a normal person because i am a normal person just a normal person with a brain that is not the nicest to them but i thought i'd just have a chat because i do get comments saying that like oh you make it look easy and stuff you don't see like i don't know the constant guilt but you also don't see the fact that six out of seven of the days that i'm not filming i'm eating and challenging myself every day and mum can vouch for that i certainly can yep no matter how guilty I feel, I will still eat. And if you're in recovery and you are eating everything and you feel alone and you feel like, um, I'm the only one eating all this stuff, you're not, you're really not. Because I do it every day. No matter if the camera's on or if the camera's off, I'm doing it. I'm just, I'm just not, I'm not letting it ruin my night. I'm just, I'm just gonna do it. This is me getting my life back. By doing this day today, it's gonna improve my mental health and therefore I will actually be healthier. So, do one diet culture. You second that, don't you? Yeah. Far too much time and energy spent on worrying about how much things are so insignificant. Really? Okay, so for dinner, I am having, I think what I read on the internet is the worst leg, is it a legume? legume yeah. The worst legume, which is baked beans. So apparently the worst legume, the worst legume is a canned baked bean because of the amount of sugar in them and they're loaded with sodium. Again, just nutrients being demonized. And again, I'm having a white potato because there's a lot about more sort of whole foods um and sweet potato is obviously more more of like a whole food kind of thing and also um white potato is just a big fear of mine because i've seen a lot online about sweet potato is healthier for you it's got more fiber rah 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 i need to not be afraid of the humble potato i can't live a full life being ruled by fear Nice things. Eat what you're eating now because you know that's really good for you. Done. Well done. Good girl. Time to get the thing I've been panicking about all day ice cream. I was gonna go for plain vanilla, but then I was like, what would little Roisin really want? And I know that little Roisin would really want the caramel, so we've got caramel. And I like have to squat. I haven't eaten ice cream literally. Mm since 2018 like when i was inpatient and even oh. then it was only plain vanilla well right put your spoon in your bowl pick some up eat it and then you can say the last time i ate ice cream was three seconds ago <laughs> go for it to say i'm gonna do this it's just another normal thing Ralph. you you've got to be able to normalize it in your life Oh my god. Oh my god. What the hell? Oh my god. I know it sounds dramatic, but. That is amazing. Really? Come on. You're not, you're not going to give in. You know you're not. So you... 
you may as well eat it. And you might as well enjoy it. No reason why you shouldn't eat it all. You just have to eat it. Thank you. That's what I need to realise. Like, I've done nothing to not deserve food. Not at all. Like, I never really thought about it like that. Anorexia makes you think you yeah. don't deserve food, but for what reason? It, there never seems to be a reason. It's just you don't deserve it. I took a quick break because the, uh, the camera dies and we've got a... Um, an imposter. A little meal support here. <laughs> I tell everyone they deserve to eat and then I don't apply it to myself when I think that I don't. And it oh shouldn't God. be even something that you need to say. It's not even that people deserve to eat. Everybody has to eat. They mm. need to eat. This is so that I can take you on long walks. Like, I can't believe I'm doing it, but it's just amazing. It's amazing, but it's totally normal. Mm. And, you know, most people would have ice cream and, you know, not have any doubts whatsoever about should I be eating this, should, should I not. I finished. A bit of most of it. <laughs> Ro, <laughs> Ro recovering exposed. <laughs> Ro recovering doesn't eat, her dog yeah. eats for her. I did it. Well done, darling. I did it. I just ate ice cream. Brilliant. On the same day that I ate a massive cookie. Yeah. I can literally eat ice cream now. Yeah, well you've got well, to. Why not? You can eat I'm anything just... you bloody want. Yeah. But actually that is true. You just should be able to say yeah. to yourself, I can eat anything I want. Just mm. go back to that, you know, girl when you were 13, 14. What would she eat? And everything. Eat, you know, anything you fancy. And whatever. you were one of the ones that always wanted to go to Pizza Express. And have the dough balls and have the pizza and have the cheesecake. Well, we used to have yeah. arguments about the last bit of garlic bread and stuff. I think so. He's not 75. Oh, God. I ate ice cream. I did it. <laughs> I'm actually really proud of myself. Did you not think you'd manage it? No, I didn't think. Like, earlier, I did not think I would manage it. Like, I was feeling so awful because of the cookie. But then I just sort of thought, I was like, literally, what is holding me back? The only thing holding me back is anorexia telling me that that one specific food is something I can't have. Ridiculous. It is ridiculous. So, I'm proud of myself because I mm. did that. I'm proud of you too. Thank you. And I'll see you at snack for another to diet culture. So ending the day with something that I genuinely don't know the last time I ate them. Salted pretzels. So little love heart pretzel. They are really, really nice. I like them. I'm really breaking a rule that I had. And also a rule that diet culture kind of has too. It's about not eating late at night. I still struggle eating late at night, so it's like 9.30 now. Life's too short to be scared of salt and sugar and fats. And what I've learned today is that all the foods that diet culture tells you you shouldn't eat and that anorexia tells me I shouldn't eat are actually the foods that taste the nicest. And at the moment they do bring the most guilt, but I can't wait for the day that I can eat them and not feel any guilt and not worry afterwards. I hope today has showed some of you that it is absolutely fine to eat the foods that certain people in society have decided are out of bounds. They're not going to kill you. They're just going to give you a bit more happiness because you'll have a freer relationship with food. A full day of challenges and showing diet culture that it can and showing anorexia that I can literally do whatever I want. I hope this helped. Maybe put into perspective that food is not the devil. That no food is the devil. Mm -hmm. Thank you for watching. Remember that you can do hard things. I will see you all soon. <laughs>